بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ڈیئر اسٹوڈینٹس السلام علیکم دس از دا لیکچر آف دا ٹاپک آف مینٹل ہیلتھ ایشوز آف دا کمیونٹی آئی ایم ڈاکٹر سہیل احمد آئی ایم ایچ او ڈی آف سائیکیٹری اینڈ بیہیویرل سائنسز آف ایف آر پی ایم سی اینڈ آئی ایم بینگ ایز دس لیکچر از ریلیٹڈ ٹو دا مینٹل ہیلتھ بینگ مینٹل ہیلتھ پروفیشنل آئی ایم ٹیکنگ دس لیکچر of the syllabus of the community medicine. The objectives of this session would be that at the end of the session you should be able to understand the concept of health and the mental health, the importance of mental health in our lives, the concept of the common mental health issues of the community and importance of the awareness of these issues and uh, finally the treatment approaches to deal with these issues. First we are going to talk about the uh, concept of health and the mental health. As described by the World Health Organization, health is a state of complete physical, mental and social well-being and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. This is the definition of the health given by the Uh, World Health Organization. So, uh, and when we talk about the mental health, it is the emotional and psychological well-being in which an individual is able to use his or her cognitive and emotional capabilities. He, uh, he or she should be able to function in the society appropriately and to meet the ordinary demands of the everyday life. Well, now I am going to talk about that why mental health is so important in, a, in our lives. Well, appropriate uh, mental health is required for all of us uh, for number one, to make efforts to get uh, desirable goals in the life. At your stage, it is very important to get to your goals, your achievements, your objectives in the life and then to function appropriately in the occupational life. Of course, uh, after doing the graduation and uh, completion of the studies, one enters into the practical field and with appropriate mental health, we are able to function appropriately in our occupation and professional lives. Also, it is also required to develop effective social relationship which is so much needed in our daily lives. And all of these contribute to develop a healthy society Of course, a healthy body and a healthy mind makes a healthy society. And in our lives, we do get a lot of stresses, day-to-day -day issues and appropriate mental health, proper mental health uh, is required to deal effectively with these day-to-day uh, -day issues in our personal lives and in our environment. Well, we have talked about what is mental health, its concept, its uh, importance in, in our lives and then in this slide we are going to talk a little about uh, uh, the mental illnesses. That is, if the mental health is not proper and if the person is not uh, mentally healthy, of course he is going to develop the illnesses which we call the psychiatric disorders or mental illnesses and a mentally unhealthy person Uh, having the psychiatric disorders would be uh, having the following uh, consequences. Number one, the mentally ill person cannot function properly in his personal occupation and social life. The different aspects of our life and a person who is not mentally healthy and having the psychiatric disorders, he would not be able to function properly in his environment, in his surroundings, in his profession and in uh, his personal life. The life of the person himself or herself and the lives of the people around him uh, would be affected badly due to the mental illnesses. When he is not mentally uh, sound, uh, his relationship issues, his performance, all of the, these aspects would be disturbed. And if uh, such kind of a person is untreated, then uh, he uh, or she can harm himself or others in the environment under the effect of the mental illness. 
Well, we saw in the previous slides that how important the mental health is for all of us. And on the one hand, the mental health is very important. And on the other hand, if a person has got the mental illness, he would not be able to function properly in the society. But uh, a very important area is the stigma related to the mental illnesses. That nobody wants to be called as a person with mental illness. Uh, due to this stigma attached with the mental illness. And what is stigma? It is a bad name or discrimination given to anyone is called stigma. So as you know the mentally ill person is given the bad names by the society like uh, what you say the pagal, you know, charya, crack, mental, shrink, all these kinds of uh, name the labels are given to the person having the psychiatric disorders and that's why the person having the mental illness would not uh, be willing or would not uh, accept to be called as a patient with uh, psychiatric disorders and these names are given because certain psychiatric disorders uh, have got uh, uh, this, this clinical features in which the patient behaves in a very odd manner like the patient of uh, psychosis uh, or schizophrenia what what we see the people uh, roaming in the street sometimes with dirty clothes uh, with uh, make, making uh, abnormal gestures and uh, self laughing uh, self talking uh, probably these patients are the cases of schizophrenia and uh, because of the appearance and behavior of these patients uh, they are given these bad names, Pagal or Charya, but these illnesses constitute very small percentage of total psychiatric illnesses. But uh, uh, the and, and the majority of the uh, patients with psychiatric illnesses usually behaves in an acceptable way, especially at early stage of the illnesses. I mean, the patients having the anxiety disorder and the depression disorder usually do not behave do not uh, have the have got the appearance of the patient of schizophrenia but because of these small percentage of cases of schizophrenia or psychosis all the psychiatric illnesses all the patients with psychiatric illnesses are labeled as pagal and charya and that prevents and the patient uh, from seeking treatment for the disorders apart from stigma there are other misconceptions about the mental illnesses which again prevents the patient from taking the treatment at the appropriate time and thus and thus the treatment is delayed unnecessarily and illness becomes chronic so what are those common misconceptions about mental illnesses number one the mental illnesses are caused by supernatural and non-human factors like magic opposition by bad spirit this is a very common misconception about the mental illnesses uh, the uh, uh, majority of the people don't think that these are illnesses they think these are the result of some magic black magic uh, some some uh, uh, evil spirit uh, bad spirit or sometimes they think that this is because of the jinn and in fact uh, 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 this is not the f uh, 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 fact uh, mental illness in fact are caused by chemical imbalances in the certain areas of the brain Probably you have heard the name of uh, neurotransmitters, dopamine, serotonin, uh, uh, norepinephrine. So there are certain areas in the brains related to the mental functions and in those areas these dopamines, uh, these, these neurotransmitters and develop an imbalance and uh, that's what uh, is the cause and that results uh, into the normal uh, um, uh, behavior. Uh, in the form of mood changes or behavior changes. A uh, second uh, misconcept is that mental illnesses cannot be cured by medicines. Uh, and these are not the illness, of course, so why the medicines to, should be given? This is a misconcept. As I told you that these mental illnesses are uh, caused by the imbalances in the neurotransmitters in the brain, so the drugs are there effective drugs are there uh, which restore that that imbalance and brings back the balance 
in this uh, function of the neurotransmitters so the mental illnesses are effectively treated by medicines and in some cases and uh, the psychotherapy is also needed to manage these kind of mental illnesses another misconcept related to the uh, men mental illness is that the drugs given for the mental illnesses or psychiatric disorders are sedative and habit forming uh, that if I start taking these drugs, I'll be dependent on these drugs for, for the whole life. And the, the, the drugs would be continued for, for a very long period. And uh, these are all sedatives and that would make me drowsy all the time. These are wrong concepts or misconceptions. Only a small percentage of the drugs are sedative. And, uh, uh, and those drugs, in fact, are required to calm down the aggressive patient, the violent patient, uh, restless patient. But otherwise, the majority of the drugs given uh, to treat the mental illnesses are they are non-sedative. They do not produce any kind of sedation, and they not they do not produce any kind of dependence. Uh, and uh, but, however, the long-term treatment is required in many cases. In only few cases, like the patient of schizophrenia, uh, the lifelong treatment may also be required, but in many other illnesses, uh, the drugs are required to be given for short periods. Another misconcept is that all psychiatric patients are hostile and violent. Again, this is a misconcept. Only small percentage of cases, which we call the patients with psychosis, may become violent, may become aggressive if they are provoked if they are teased otherwise the majority of the patients of the uh, mood disorders anxiety disorders they are not hostile or violent in fact they are the sufferers they they, they, they do not cause harm to anyone they themselves are, are suffering from the uh, illnesses so these are the wrong concepts related to uh, uh, the, um, about the mental illnesses in this slide we are going to talk about the how common mental health problems uh, are there in, in the world. According to a document of WHO uh, re related to the global burden of disease, uh, the mental health problems make up about 8.1% of the total global burden of disease of which the depression is the largest contributor. In this 8.1% the major disease was found uh, the case of depression and in addition to this 8.1 percent uh, as much as additional 34 percent of the global burden of disease is due to the disorders that are behavior related i mean these are not in fact the illnesses but uh, they are the, uh, these are the result of the abnormal behavior for example the behavior like uh, violence, smoking and drinking, these uh, contribute to the 34% of the global burden of disease. And among the top 10 causes of disability worldwide, depression was fourth in 1990, but it is expected that depression will be the second frequent cause of disability worldwide in 2020. So it is now it was the document related uh, given uh, made in 2004 so now we are in 2021 so now you can understand that depression is now considered as the second frequent cause of disability uh, worldwide and expectedly a uh, number one or the most common illness in 2030 this is what we talked about uh, in the previous slide, this uh, slide shows the 10 leading causes of the burden of disease in the worldwide in 2004 and what will be in the 2030 or 2030. So uh, uh, you can see uh, that uh, if you uh, see the number 3 row. Uh, uh, Unipolar depressive disorders, uh, which uh, was number three in the year 2004, uh, is expected to be number one in the year uh, 2030 or 2030. 
so from uh, nine years from uh, today from this year uh, we would be probably having the depression is the most common morbidity or the disorder or disability uh, uh, in the world so you can understand the magnitude of this illness this is very important to understand but this slide is again related to the prevalence of the mental health problems in the world and uh, again this is a document of the world health organization which refers uh, uh, that almost 20 percent of the adult population experience at least one episode of mental disorders sometimes uh, in one year time so 20 percent is it is a huge number and uh, again it is reported that almost 25 to 30 percent of the patients seeking treatment from general practitioners or family physicians are found to have some kind of psychiatric disorders almost one fourth of the people or the patients attending a family practitioner again this is a huge number uh, another um, uh, area of the concern is uh, the uh, uh, suicide so it is uh, uh, reported it was found out that an estimated 800,000 suicide deaths occurred worldwide per year representing an annual global age standardized suicide rate of 10.5 per 100,000 population we'll discuss this topic in uh, another another lecture that suicide and parasuicide but you can understand that this figure is very high so how common the mental health problems are there in our society you can understand from this slide well on the one hand we saw in the previous slides that how common the mental illnesses or psychiatric illnesses in the community worldwide but on the other hand now we see here that uh, the uh, what are the mental health health care facilities available uh, in in our environment uh, the world health organization recommends and encourages the member states that all countries should spend at least five percent of their gdp that is the gross domestic product on health in order to meet the targets set by the nations this is the recommendation given by the world health organization but what is the situation here in our country and like in any other uh, and many uh, underdeveloped countries that in our, our country if the budget allocated to the health in pakistan is even less than two percent of the gdp and of course uh, it is very sad to know that mental health is of is not a pri priority but it becomes uh, at the bottom uh, as far as the services of psychiatrists are available uh, not more than 500 psychiatrists in uh, are available in our country uh, uh, with 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 a population of you can say 200 million or even more than that uh, so it becomes uh, the ratio becomes one for 400,000 people is one psychiatric is a psychiatrist is available so uh, you can see uh, there are not enough psychiatrists or mental health uh, experts uh, uh, professionals in our country this scarcity uh, deficiency of trained mental health and nursing and community workers is also there along with uh, the less number of psychiatrists because these are also important part of the team of the therapist that the mental health nurses and community workers they do work side by side with the doctors so not only there is a scarcity or deficiency of a uh, psychiatrist but also the other uh, members of this uh, team uh, and um, uh, there is associated deficiency of specific psychiatric care centers also along with the psychiatrist because psychiatric patients require care and treatment as in patient in, in in specific centers not in the general uh, hospitals so there is deficiency of psychiatric clean uh, uh, hospitals also in our country apart from established established psychiatric illnesses there are a lot of behavioral issues uh, which uh, occur due to the unhealthy mind and these behavior issues cause a uh, lot of damage 
or disturbances in our societies. So an unhealthy mind uh, can give rise to uh, uh, the disturbances like like uh, the bad habits or uh, disturbed area of functioning in our society in the form of uh, gambling, the substance abuse, the violence and the crime, suicide attempted, uh, suicide attempted and committed, terrorism including suicide bombing, adventurism including rash driving, one wheeling, bullying and disturbance in interpersonal relationships. All these areas, uh, if not considered to be uh, the, the areas of established psychiatric illnesses, but these are the behavior issues, these are the result of the behavior disturbances and that causes a lot of damage in our society. So you can see the unhealthy mind not only give rise to the established psychiatric illnesses, but also to these behavior disturbances uh, which causes uh, um, problems in the community and the society. Now I am going to give you just an idea of the common mental illnesses which are prevalent in our society. Of course the detail about the mental illnesses would be taught to you in the clinical postings when you would be posted in the psychiatric wards. But just, just to give an idea that common uh, mental illnesses in our society are uh, different the following groups the anxiety related disorders the mood disorders the psychotic disorders including schizophrenia the drug abuse and dependence somatoform disorders child psychiatric disorders psychiatric disorders of the elderly and the personality disorders there are other uh, group of illnesses as well but these are the common ones well, if we, if we talk briefly about these uh, different uh, group of disorders, first the anxiety related disorders. Anxiety related disorders of course are characterized by the core feature of anxiety, which is anxiety is a feeling of restlessness, apprehension, worry, fear and insecurity. And common anxiety related disorders in our society are the phobias, the panic disorder, obsessive compulsive disorder, generalized anxiety disorder, acute stress disorder po and post traumatic stress disorders and uh, many of these anxiety related disorders occur in response to certain stressful circumstances. Uh, I have just given an idea about this disorder of course we would be dealing with all this disorder detail late in the later uh, years when uh, in your uh, clinical postings. Well, another disorder of psychiatric illnesses which is common in the society is the mood disorder. And of course the core feature as the name suggests is the change in the mood. The mood may be elated in certain disorders, it may be low or down in other disorders. In unipolar mood disorders which is uh, also called uh, the group of depressive disorders or commonly the depression the mood is low and in bipolar mood disorders there are episodes of extremes of the mood extreme changes in the mood uh, that is the episodes of having the depression and episodes of having the elation which is called the manic episode uh, depression is usually due to in many cases it is due to the environmental factors and the stresses and if depression is not properly treated appropriately at the um, uh, time when it is needed then it can lead to the suicidal thoughts and the attempts. Another important group of disorders which is uh, not very common but is very important is called the psychosis. And the core features in the in this group, uh, core features in the disorders having in, in this group are the abnormal beliefs which are called delusions and abnormal perceptions which are called hallucinations. Delusion is an abnormal false and firm belief and hallucinations are the abnormal perception in the absence of any stimulus. The most common psychosis, the most common illness in this group is called the schizophrenia or you can also call it schizophrenia. The patients uh, having schizophrenia 
usually gets uh, uh, socially isolated, preoccupied by himself or herself, may become suspicious, hostile and violent and as I told you, he or she may be having the features which are called delusion and hallucinations. Usually they lack the awareness to the presence of the illness and say uh, and and, uh, and so they refuses to take treatment and it is not an easy task, it is difficult to treat these kind of disorders. Well, this is an important group of psychiatric disorders and commonly prevalent in our society that is the drug abuse and dependence. What is abuse? It is the use of drug without the medical advice and the frequent abuse of any drug may lead to the dependence and dependence uh, as far as the drug dependence is concerned is mostly due to the street drugs which are like uh, cannabis the common name is cheras and bhang the opiates the common name uh, in this group are the heroin or opium or afim uh, the alcohols, different type of alcohols, the cocaine, of course the tobacco, the shisha, another form of uh, use of tobacco and now the new comparatively relatively newer drugs are being uh, commonly used in our society including the ice. And sometimes dependence is due to the prescribed drugs like benzodiazepines sleeping pills, neem ki dawai. Dependence may give rise to the physical complications or illnesses or to the social complications like involvement in gambling and crimes. So be aware in the youth, in the teens, in the twenties, uh, the usually the youth is exposed to many kind of drug abuses and they can land into the dependence. So we should be careful about ourselves not to get involved into the drug abuse. Well, another kind of psychiatric disorders is uh, related to the group which is called the personality disorders in which the, pers the personality of a person is uh, not normal. I mean, the illness, any kind of illness persists for few weeks, for few months and then it is when it is treated the person may become alright. But sometimes the person has got the abnormal features in the personality which gives rise to the disturbance in the functioning of himself or herself and also disturb uh, the relationship with the others and uh, uh, generally cause problems in the society. So these kind of uh, uh, people having the personality disorders they need long term treatment usually by the psychological therapies and abnormal personality is the core feature. Well if we briefly talk about the treatment approaches to deal with different kind of psychiatric disorders then we should have the following approaches. Number one whenever we come across any patient having psychiatric illnesses he, he needs proper assessment by careful history taking and mental state assessment uh, which is a part of the clinical training then after uh, diagnosis the informational care about the illness and its treatment is given to the patient and the caregiver and uh, then the treatment plan is devised which is in the form of the drug treatment depending upon the kind of illness, antidepressants, anxiolytics, antipsychotics and mood stabilizers may be required to be given to the patient. Another approach would be the psychological therapies or counseling and what, what we call the psychotherapies done by the clinical psychologist. And in some patients the occupational therapy and rehabilitation is another approach which is required to deal with. As we saw that mental illnesses or psychiatric disorders are commonly seen in our society. So for the early diagnosis and proper treatment, first of all the awareness uh, about these uh, illnesses in the society is uh, uh, essentially required. And what are the different uh, approaches uh, to create awareness are number one, 
the awareness regarding the presence of psychological disturbances first of all we have to make the people realize that they have got some kind of psychiatric disturbances uh, i mean for those who are suffering from the psychiatric illnesses to so we have to talk about the common uh, uh, clinical features the presentation of psychiatric illnesses in the community gathering so that they can understand th that uh, probably uh, they are suffering from some kind of disorders which require treatment then secondly the awareness is also required to be given regarding the cause of mental problems which may be the genetic the environmental including the stresses of the life and some other causes uh, awareness is also required uh, about the, the taking or seeking treatment or support from professionals including the psychiatrist and the psychologist so if they are aware and if they are made to understand that these illnesses are not due to uh, some uh, evil spirits or bad spirits or Uh, supernatural forces and then they have to accept that these illnesses are treated by the specialist and specialists including the psychiatrist and the clinical psychologist and other members of this team uh, awareness is also required uh, in the society in the community uh, to provide support to those persons who are suffering from similar kind of problems or the psychiatric illnesses and this support reduces the stigma the misconceptions and provide opportunities uh, create insight for, for these people to take a treatment at the proper time appropriately now let's talk briefly about the prevention of mental illnesses as you as you have heard the saying that prevention is better than the cure so if we are able to prevent certain illnesses then of course the illnesses uh, would not become severe and we may treat them easily if they later on the life they manifest in the milder form so what are the areas which in uh, on which we can concentrate and focus uh, so that we can prevent the mental disorders number one the healthy life is tight we have to take care of our diet the proper sleep regular physical exercise avoidance of bad habits including the substance abuse the drug abuse and the area is keeping fine balance in domestic social and occupational life commitments we should not get ourselves overburdened uh, you know that over commitments this leads to the mental stresses and then the early identification of stress effective stress coping st st strategies if we are under stress we have to identify ourselves that we are in un, uh, under stress and then we need to learn the effective stress coping strategies to deal with the, the the problem we are suffering then if we are not able to deal ourselves we need to take support from experts wherever required and in the form of uh, you know the counselors uh, the psychologists and sometimes the psychiatrist so that they can timely treat uh, these illnesses at the um, at the early stage and again the the raising awareness about psychological problems in the society in the environment in the community uh, then it it it, uh, it helps to prevent uh, the the uh, is uh, help to prevent the illnesses occurring in the severe form this is the last slide which is related to the take home message of this uh, lecture and what is that the babat the mental health is as important as physical health in our life uh, number 2 the physically and mentally healthy persons can achieve their goals in the life and can contribute to develop a healthy society and a healthy nation mental health issues are a reality and there should be no shame hesitation in seeking treatment for those problems from the expert there should be no hesitation and shame in seeking treatment uh, for those persons who are having these kind of problems uh, number 3 or no, number 4 if identified and treated early uh, then the treatment can help the person to live a comfortable and 
purposeful life otherwise in untreated cases the life of the sufferer and the people around him can be a misery so if early treatment is uh, given then the life becomes very comfortable and if the treatment is not given at the appropriate time the life becomes very miserable and finally a healthy and balanced lifestyle and relatively stress free environment can prevent many psychological disorders especially stress related so thank you very much for listening i hope you got some ge- uh, you got some benefit out of this uh, this lecture uh, you can if you have any queries we, you can ask me or if, if we can meet sometime later on you can address those queries thank you very much